Growing up, my gaming setup was almost non-existent. My whole experience depended on land houses for Mu Online and Counter-Strike 1.6, or going to friends' houses to try games that I didn't know. It took me years into the PS3 era to have my PS2, and during this whole time, the only computer I had ran Minecraft on 15 FPS on low settings. I didn't know about emulators back then. So, it's safe to assume that I'm very familiar with bad games, since most of my life, those were the only games my computer could run. I figured I spent so much time playing the worst games ever that it wouldn't be so bad to try this out. So, right from the start, this was a bad idea. But without further ado, this is the worst games of 2022. Here are the rules for this list. I considered a mix of various specialized sites and YouTube channels to make my own choices of games. This will not be a rank-based list. All of these games are bad, and I will list its reasons during the video. Some of the games will have a few live commented clips of my playthrough to illustrate how bad they are. I will not go on any depth about the games, for the sake of keeping the video short. For starters, this is a remastered version of a PS2 game, so it is kind of weird for it to be on a 2022 worst games list, but it will have to make it in because holy shit, the stealth in this game is so bad, it is almost outrageous. You could literally run dozens of times in front of an enemy, but if you hit the right button at the right time, they will not see you. Besides that, the game is very clumsy and the gameplay is very dated. Considering its necessity to have a lot of farming to progress and its quite average plot, I would say that this was already a bad game on PS2. So, quite obvious it would be a bad remaster, isn't it? So, this is basically the most generic Smash Bros ever. It feels and looks like a mobile game ported for PC. And guess what? That's exactly what this is. A port from a mobile game that is pretty basic even for a mobile game. The mechanics are unbelievably shallow, all the matches are really boring and the game didn't even work for me after the tutorial matches against bots. Every time I tried to go online, it just didn't work. Let me play, please. Let me play, please. I, I just want to play and say that the game is bad. Let me... With that, I gave up and went to mobile to try it a little bit more. I can safely say that I regret that decision. My first note taken while playing this game was, sucks dick. The game is a generic Souls-like with awful writing, horrible voice acting, and a protagonist that makes me want to stick forks in my eyes just to make the pain go away. I give you best fun I have. Only one bronze left, so it easy. The same for complementary shield. Complementary? That's a complicated. Oh my God! This script writing is so bad. <laughs> The game is overall very clunky, with bad animations and pathetic performance on PC. There was a bit of fun in the gigantic tower of shit that this game is, but it will certainly go away very fast because of how generic and repetitive the game is. Oh my god, this was so Dark Souls and so terrible. Oh god, this is so bad. It is insane to know that this is one of the best games from this list. This game I didn't even bother recording while I played it. Overall, just very boring. Boring story, boring stealth, which is basically the whole game, so red flag right there, bad animations, etc. This is a very, very forgettable game. Uh, the type that in a few years even the people who beat it will have a hard time remembering that it existed. The only part that is memorable is how incredibly dumb the AI is. So, it is easy to say that it deserves a spot in this video. When I first read that Remedy was involved on a Crossfire project that would be an exclusive to Xbox consoles, my initial reaction was, why the actual fuck? Considering that since then, 
they've announced Alan Wake 2, I think it's safe to say that everyone has bills to pay. The multiplayer is generic, almost every free FPS will be better than this. This is the classic, even for free, is too expensive. The campaign is way better than the multiplayer, but that's not much considering how low the bar is. I would say the quality is leveled to the worst Call of Duty campaigns. And considering that this is the only thing that Remedy did here, it's fair to say that this is not their finest work. This is the biggest disappointment of this list for me. While researching for this list and playing the games, Domen grew a bit on me. I feel a little biased by the fact that it is a Brazilian dev studio and I am from Brazil, so I really wanted this to be good. I think this is the reason that it is on the list. This is the only of these games that I had even a little spark of hope for, but at the end, it is just a generic Souls-like. The game is okay, most likely the best on this list. It's raw, buggy, has a very clunky combat that you most likely discover ways to break very fast. That's kind of it, an average game that is disappointing because of how generic it is. This game is very weird. It feels like it's a little unfair to put it in the list of the worst games of the year, because the reality is that this is a kid's game. This really look like those generic Android games. It is very basic, very simple, almost feels like a really well-made student project. The stealth is really bad, you will most likely end up just fighting everyone, which is actually a bit of fun for a few minutes, but ends up very repetitive very fast. I almost feel like everything is scripted. I'm only like clicking and the things are just happening. I don't feel like I'm in control of this guy. It is clearly a very low budget kid oriented game that feels like it came straight from the PS2 era. Oh my god, this game. To start, it is completely broken. Sometimes it even shows parts of code in the texts. The game is clearly not complete. There's entire classes that are not finished. The story is pure trash and the voice acting is horrible. To top it all out, even disregarding all problems, the game is unbelievably boring. The game was rushed out of early access and abandoned very little time later. And the sum of all parts is just a big mess. a licensed game, which already should be enough to put fear even on the best of us. The old version is said to be a good game, but I never knew it even existed. The whole story for this one revolves around development problems. Because of copyright issues, the whole code for the older game was lost. This remaster was made using a virtual machine version of the old game, and that created a lot of problems. The visuals are bad, the fun sometimes is almost impossible to read, and everything looks smooth, like those weird filters people put on old emulators to have better graphics. Overall, it is a technical mess. This one is actually a little disappointing. I mean, it is not that bad, but it is a generic game with a generic plot. A lot of things are copy-pasted from Zelda games, and they made everything they took worse. The game has the classic character suffering from loss of memory to start the adventure. How creative, huh? It launched basically broken on consoles, and on PC it is really badly optimized, with low frame rate even on good PCs. And you will gladly find a game-breaking bug every 10 minutes. The game and map design are horrible, the graphics are really dated, the textures almost look like they didn't load, and random pop-ins, sometimes entire sections of the map, occur very often. Long story short, a horrible and disappointing mess of a game. This game is actually insane. I will not even start on this one. The amount of pay to win present is horrendous. I will just leave this clip right here. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> Well, this is the definition of pure junk. Following the steps from the first game, Alex 2 is an ugly and clunky game with a meh story and almost no reason to be played. Unless you are a fan of Euro junk, and I don't know why you would do that to yourself. I actually forgot that this game even existed, and thank God for that, because 
Jesus, this one hurts. The game is very ugly, has horrible gameplay, completely changes the tone of the series, there is so much more to complain about. You think Cyberpunk was released in the most broken state ever? Well, this one will be a good competitor for that title. The story and characters are just sufferable. I would rather look at the wall for hours than to try this shit again. And to top all that out, look at this cat dude. I saved the best for last. I mean, the worst for last. Oh boy, Babylon's Fall. Where to begin? Well, first of all, if you live under a rock, this game was a miserable fail. It launched already dead with only 600 concurrent players in the first 24 hours and an all-time peak of 1166 players. I have absolutely no clue of why people even thought that this game would be good. Since the first trailer I've said many times it would be horrible and well, guess I was right. For a full priced only multiplayer game, it looks just horrendous, like an early PS3 game with bad graphics. And this is only the tip of the iceberg on how bad this game is. For instance, the problem is so gigantic that the servers are already closing. Babylon's Fall will not even have one year of live servers and will be shut down. I'm sure that this one, together with Anthem, will be remembered as one of the biggest AAA fails ever. So this is it guys. This was probably the hardest video to make here in the channel. These games are so horrible that it took me two weeks more than the planet time for this video. I surely hope that this will be the last time I play any of these games. This list will be back for a 2023 version at the end of this year. Thanks for watching. Any support will be greatly appreciated. Until the next one. Bye.